Hey guys, and welcome back to The Caver's Chronicles. I'm sure you guys who were already paying attention closely to the title screen noticed that already. But I have finally decided, and I believe I'd like to go with that new title. Now, about the title screen, you probably noticed, as I said, if you were paying attention, that I altered the text, and I'm hoping that's te a temporary change, as I'm hoping that someone will either come up with... Well, in general, I'm hoping that someone will be able to come up with some really awesome new artwork for the title screen. And now, Cavers Chronicles is kind of what I'm going with, but it's not a 100% confirmed, because if someone comes up with some really awesome artwork for the title screen that is not that, then it'll probably be in very strong contention for the new title. So, with that said, you guys will notice I've done a bit more work off screen on this tunnel, and I kind of wanted to catch you guys up. Now, as you can see, you can see what I am planning, in a way, for this tunnel. What I'd like to do is glass on both sides, and then smooth stone down the center, and rather than torches, have a much more interesting lighting pattern. And I guess I'll just go ahead and say it. I guess I will just go ahead and say it. I'd like to use glowstone. But for that, we need to go back to the nether. I don't have anywhere near enough. I think I have. Let's see. What's 128 divided by 4? 32, I think. And that I don't think will be anywhere near enough to get this done. Um, where the torches are now, you see that's going to be glass. So the glowstone's just going to go right down the center, and it'll be right under the track, and I'm thinking that's just going to look really awesome. So, let us continue down. Everywhere you see dirt right now, that's going to be become glass one day. So I've finished up all the smooth stone down through here. All the way down here. <laughs> this, I believe, is where we broke out on the other side of the island. This... I don't remember. I think it might be part of the landmass that Resurrection Station sitting on, or at least the piece right next to it, and this is where all of the ice was, all that crazy ice. And as you can see, gotten some work started here, and I've started to carve out a little bit here for our future station. Haven't gotten too much done. I was thinking I would do that on screen and give you guys another fun musical montage. Um, have not completely decided on that yet. And here we are. Decided to leave all the smooth stone I had smelted over here. I'm going to grab this for a second. I'll explain that later. So, that's kind of what you missed off screen. Now, let's go ahead and take the shortcut back. And as we're walking, wanted to kind of talk about something. It wasn't until about a few days ago that it finally hit me that, what do you mean PAX is this weekend? Oh shit, I'm not anywhere near done with all the stuff I want to do before 1.8 comes out. I better hurry up and get stuff done. Damn, running out of time. <laughs> so to that end, I think we need to kind of rush along and get some of these things done if we want to have any chance of having this done before 1.8 as this will probably be the very last recording session I have before 1.8 if the rumors I have heard on the internet, because you know they're always true, are actually true. Uh, to give you guys another sense of time, it is currently Thursday before PAX starts, and from what I've heard, according to, again, internet rumor, the day Notch actually goes and showcases 1.8 to the world at PAX, that is the same day he's going to actually release 1.8 to the world. And so that's tomorrow. Uh, according to his tweet, today he is actually 
I'm avoiding going down there for a second, so... Patience while I wander. <laughs> he has said that he now has the version of 1.8 that, that he is going to officially demo saved to a flash drive, and he's going to install it on all the computers tomorrow. So to me, that says I've got roughly 24 hours before 1.8 comes out to get as much done as I can. And because of that, I think we're going to have to put off some of the projects I mentioned a few episodes back. So what I'm going to try and do now is finish this tunnel, finish the tracks, all the tracks, and I'll explain that too, and finally finish the one cave, or the Energizer Cave, as some of you guys have been coming to call it, because it just keeps going and going and going, my god, man. <laughs> and finish up the cave base, as there are a few tweaks I need to make to, the, to that. I still have to put the Aero Factory back, and there's one addition that that place needs. Uh, let's see... Looking at my notes again, I'll, I'll do this so it looks like something's happening on screen. Do, do, do. I think... yeah, that's good. Now, something else from comments recently, when I was asking you guys for awesome things to do, potentially stuff with redstone. Again, I might have the name wrong, and once again I will flash a name on the screen for you guys if I wasn't. I think it was Ninja, who was possibly... or maybe it was Zion Steel. It was one of you two. I'm pretty sure, that we're suggesting that you were tr going to try and come up with something cool that would let us get all the way from Resurrection Station, all the way down into our cave. And I found it kind of funny, because after I'd read that comment, I had, I had actually been planning that all along, and every time I come up with an idea, I would, originally my idea was going to be extend the quick drop or the water ladder all the way down to the cave but things just weren't going to line up and so I spent a little bit of time off screen seeing if I could find something that would line up that would actually end up working pretty well with our tunnel since that's the quick way back and well take a look at what I found Now, where does this lead? Hey, look! Where I glitched through lava! Yay! <laughs> That's why this redstone torch is here, by the way. That was to mark my passing through the unpassable obsidian. <laughs> and here we are, right at the base. So I think this is going to work out really well. This will be a nice, fast trip back if we haven't end up having any trouble with the cave, finishing up what's left. So I know there's some areas where I've walked in, and every time I walk by, there's skeletons, so... Who knows, maybe we will find another skeleton dungeon. Or, yeah, dungeon. Now, this still needs a little bit of cleaning up. This might get some glowstone, too. Maybe, I'm thinking, like, right here in the center. That might look good. Because I know in some other tunnels like this that I've dug before, light up here ends up looking really nice. Now, let's see, to actually get some progress today, what we need to do is actually, like I said, finish this tunnel. Now, for that, we're going to need glass, smooth stone, and glowstone. Now, I think, like I showed you guys just now, I finished up the smooth stone off screen, and we've got tons of it back in the basement of Resurrection Station, but when it comes to glass, that's it. 30 sand. Not a whole lot available for things. And yeah, so when I was calculating glowstone dust, this is what I was talking about. There's a little bit left in the cave base, but we're going to need a lot more than this. So, what are we going to do about sand? Well, some of you guys are probably going to say, well, just go back to the sand pit. It looked like there's a lot left. I remember I was on the tour server and I saw tons of sand. Well... Let's head over there and... Hi guys, how you doing? You know, I'm pretty sure 
the cave will connect here because look how close this staircase is to this cave here. And that connects to the cave. So if we don't bump into this at some point, I'm going to be shocked. So anyway, as I was saying, actually, before that, you'll notice I tore down the glass and just put the wall back because the water ladder's broken. There's really no reason to have the glass sticking out anymore. Now, for real, like I was saying, let me meet you guys over at the sand pit real quick. So I think on the way, what actually might be better is I'll give you guys the nice aerial view of the sand pit. And... You might notice the name does not quite ow, fit anymore. Yeah, I, I've already mined this out. Now, there's a little sand here, and there's a little sand there, and there's a little bit there, but I don't really want to mess with that sand. That, that doesn't look like enough. And eh, maybe there's some over there. So what I'm thinking is maybe... It's time we go and find ourselves a desert. And to accomplish that, I think maybe it's time... Mm, right, can't do that anymore. We make something in this LP that I have never actually made. Why, well, yes, I am talking about a map. But if I'm talking about a map, why am I at the string factory? Well, that relates to something else. I had other plans that, as I mentioned before, I've been starting to watch a lot of Etho, and I really liked what he was doing with all the dispensers and wanted to do something similar. So I figured, hey, that means I'm going to need a lot of bows. So I came over here and was going to just overnight myself in the string factory and get a whole bunch of string together and ready to go. Except, as I was testing the system to make sure it was still functioning, as I hadn't checked it in a long time, I found out it's basically broken. The spiders no longer get burnt by the lava. When they climb, they don't even touch it anymore. I think it has to do with, in one of the updates at some point, when Notch fixed it so you can't actually burn yourself when you walk up to a block. Like if lava had come out to this block and was stopped right here, and you did this, you wouldn't get burnt. And I think that was the effect that caused the spiders to die. Well, because of that, I ended up having to spend about 45 minutes to an hour working out different th different designs, redesigning this whole thing. And so what I wanted to show you guys, for those of you who had been actually using my string factory design in your worlds, what I did. It has now actually been converted to a drowning trap. A bit slower, not as effective as lava, but without figuring out other ways to make lava work. This seemed like the best solution. And I actually, like I said, this went through a few versions, a few iterations, and this is the one that I found actually works the nicest. Um, first, I wanted to show you guys, I actually ended up getting rid of the wall that was here. As they were flowing down, they'd jump, and they'd get stuck climbing the wall. That was irritating. Something else I've been considering, too, is if you'll recall the wall I built right here at the end, right before they get washed out of the dungeon. I think they're jumping and climbing on that, too, so I haven't removed it, but I would suggest you guys try that if you wanted to improve efficiency in your string factories. Now, for the actual change, you will notice the lava actually used to slide through here, and where these signs are is where the ladders used to be. Now the way this works is everything is exactly the same as it was before, more or less. I actually ended up taking out these two blocks here, so that way there's actually room for them. Get, get in there. There you go. But now it's actually been replaced with four source blocks of water. Now the problem is if you were to just set this up as is and just have the signs holding up this of the water of the water you'd have a terrible bit of backflow coming back into here and you'd end up with a dead zone here which isn't too bad the spiders usually would swim through anyway because they want to get you 
but your items would drop and they'd be stuck here and you'd have no way to get at them and nobody wants that. It's not a factory that way. So, added the signs on both sides. That keeps the water from interacting with each other. And thanks to the glitchy water physics and things going through corners, the spiders are actually encouraged to swim up into their own trap, which is very handy. But as you'll have noticed, some of them are kind of... Yeah. Don't always swim up. So if you're here happening to be standing at the factory in the collection point, you can just smack them as they're jumping and they'll hop up in there. But what I have found in my testing is that after a long enough time, they will eventually jump high enough and actually start climbing the walls and end up in here. And what's nice about this being four is originally I ended up only having the two source blocks because I didn't want the conflicting water. Um, I found that with two, some of them were able to turn around, have their head over here, and they weren't drowning at all. So when I went, switched to four, what I found that was also really nice is that they stack when they're in there. Yes, thank you for being the wonderful example of what happens when spiders don't do what they're supposed to do. Get in there. Thank you. And something else that you might recall, we moved the collection point over here because spiders kept acting dumb and not wanting to come out of the thing because of their climbing. I found that actually standing right here seems to work the best if you're willing to AFK. And if you're going with a drowning trap, it's mostly an AFK factory anyway. Because if you'll notice, we've got this guy here drowning. And we've only got one guy stuck in the factory now, but, or the dungeon, he's floating down. Here he comes. He's climbing like an idiot again, but give it a second, and bam. Here he is. This seems to be the best place to stand, as eventually, well, because this guy is not jumping up, he will cause a bit of a backup, but as you just saw, he will jump eventually. And then most of the time, they all immediately jump right in anyway. And so as it turns out, this actually works quite well. And I'll show you real quick what happens when you stand over here. They tend to like climbing up in there, but also, because you're over here, they tend to try and get back this way too much. And if they've got that block over there with the spider not getting in, it's not as effective. Oh, and I guess the last little piece I should mention is that due to me mo remo eh. due to me changing things up the way I did, I now have one source block right there in this back corner. And that actually ends up creating the flow that draws everything down to here. Now, originally, what I tried to do was have just the one block and have that there. But the problem ended up being that their drops would end up falling on this. And so you'd have the dead zone where you would end up losing string. And at first I was like, you know, it's not that big a deal because it seemed to keep the spiders from... Let's see, like that, from bouncing in the water. They would jump up immediately because they had something to stand on. But I ended up deciding I'd rather not have the dead zone here. So, got rid of the block. And thanks to the way the water is flowing, everything comes out here to you anyway. And that, I think, is about everything. So if you guys had any factories like mine, this is the way to fix it. At least the way I fixed it. So I hope that helps. And now, let's go ahead and run back up to the house while we can. It should be bright long enough. And I will show you what a quick overnight in that factory did for me. Okay, back home. For the first time in a very long time. Give you guys a bit of an eyeful since it's, again, been so long. Anyway, instead of having the string over there in our goodies chest, I had a little extra, and I figured it made sense to put it with the wool, so... 
One overnight, full inventory of string. Now, given that I said I'm pushing most of my plans off to what happens after 1.8, I don't know if we'll ever actually get to use this string, but it's nice to know that I now have a effective string factory that if in the future we want to continue down the path of doing something with dispensers or lots of bows, we now have a solution that makes a pretty decent factory. I'm pretty sure there's still ways to do it with lava, I just didn't have the patience. So, let us see. Hmm, I guess while we're waiting for night, let's go ahead and make, as I said, our very first in-game map. Um, do I have... Oh, good. I was about to say, I better have some of this. <laughs> some sugar cane. I'm pretty sure you guys already know, but sugar cane used to be reed, and that's how you made paper. And you need paper to make maps. So. Put this back. Um, hmm. That should be enough food. Anyway. Head over here to the redstone chest. Something I never actually pointed out to you guys was that I moved the redstone here, and... Because I couldn't put it on the floor. Well, because we had, this is the snow and brick chest. I put it here. It looks cool. And there's a ton of clay that needs smelting, but... Again, things that might never happen. Alright. So... First things first, we need a compass. I'm glad I still remember how to make one of those. Let me put the compass in here. And you guys might be asking, wondering, why are you making a map, Nocturne? Don't you have one on your website? Yeah, I do. But I thought it might be a lot more fun to use the in-game one to find mm -hmm. us a desert. Thank you, Twitter. And let's see. What's it say? Ah, uh, someone's shocked as me someone as shocked as I am that 1.8 might actually be coming out tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still pretty shocked on that. Anyway, I thought it would be a lot more fun to use the in-game map. Because we've never had one, and it might be pretty cool to try and find things that way. Especially considering I think maps work... I don't know, you probably get about... Maybe one region, maybe four. You know, region being 512 by 512, so... Fuzzy in my head math, I think that's a 16 by 16 chunk. Not sure. Guess I have a bed in my inventory, but... This is the house bed. Um, in the way. Good boy. So you, you guys see I'm not opposed to using a bed. I like passing the night, especially when I want to go out and do some exploring. But, when we're done, it goes back in the chest. And that's how I've actually been doing things lately. Um, nighttime reading material. <laughs> that's how I've been doing things lately off screen and I never actually sh showed you guys that's what I've been doing so where to first pretty sure we'd have some good luck if we went off that way but let's check it out 